In this video, I'm going to provide new builders with important tips and techniques so that when they have an issue with their bike, they'll be able to find the help they need. This is for people who use forums, Facebook groups, and YouTube comments when asking for help. There's a lot of do's and don'ts and some important information that you simply need to know before you start asking questions. This way, people who are able to help you will be willing to help you. As an example, in this video I'll be using an issue we're having with our clutch to show you guys exactly how I would ask for help in forums or on YouTube. Tip number one. When asking for help in your initial post, it's important to provide enough relevant information so that people know exactly what your issue is. For example, I'm having an issue with my clutch, but what I don't want to do is post, Hey guys, my clutch isn't working, how do I fix it? That's what we call a very open-ended question. It's kind of all-encompassing. It's right along with the same people who post up, hey guys, I just built a bike, it won't start, how do I fix it? Essentially, it doesn't provide any information. There's multiple issues that could be at play in this situation, so you need to help narrow it down. Here's what I want you to post. Hey guys, I'm having an issue with my clutch. When I pull in the clutch lever all the way, the engine still won't disengage from the rear wheel. That's my example and that's the situation we have with this particular bike. The reason I post it that way is because on the flip side it could be that the engine is not engaging. Maybe when you let off the clutch the motor is not engaging to the rear wheel. You see there's a flip side to that so it's important that when asking for help people don't have to ask you a bunch of questions just to figure out what the problem is. A continuation to tip number one is to remember that time is valuable to a lot of people. So when asking for help you want to keep that in mind. Tip number two is to provide pictures. Now video is better, but only if you do it right. If you're not experienced with taking video, or you're just intimidated by it, at least provide pictures. Make sure they're good high quality pictures, high resolution, and they're in focus. You want close ups of anything that you think might be related to the issue. If you provide a lot of relevant information that's one or two paragraphs long, but you have no pictures or video, a lot of the times people aren't going to bother to read it. It's going to fall to the bottom of the page and get buried under a bunch of memes. However, if you provide this information along with some pictures or video, people are going to realize that you're willing to help yourself, so they might want to help you. It's going to reach out and grab their attention. A continuation of tip number two is that these pictures also help other people who might have your same issue, or give people ideas. Maybe you did something unique on your build that's not the subject of the post, but at the end of the day, you may have helped somebody else. Tip number three, video is better, but only if you do it right. Here's some important tips and techniques that I want you to use when recording a video of your issue. First off, if you're using a smartphone, make sure that you turn it horizontal. Now a lot of people who are going to be watching your video might be on a smartphone and it won't matter, but people who are watching on a computer with larger screens might be able to grab more detail as long as you're holding your phone horizontal, because they can't exactly take their monitor and turn it on its side. You're upping the resolution by doing this. If at all possible, hold the camera with both hands. This will give you the steadiest shot possible. I know in some situations you'll need to use your second hand to help show the issue, and that's fine. But if you don't need to use your second hand to show the issue, hold the camera as steady as you possibly can. Make sure you get nice close-up shots of anything that might be related to the issue. Make sure that you're moving the camera very slowly. You want to move the camera slowly, especially if you're posting something like Facebook, which defaults to 30 frames a second. When you move the camera too fast at a low frame rate, the image becomes blurry and it's hard to pick out and stop at certain points in the video which might be relevant for the person to help you. So hold it steady, get close-ups, make sure that you're in focus, and move slowly. Record as much video as you can. You don't need to do any fancy editing, nobody expects you to do that. But the more information you provide in your video is simply going to help people out. A lot of times I've been able to grab problems that I wouldn't have seen otherwise because the person recorded the video properly. Situations where they hold the camera vertically with one hand and they move around too quick makes it really hard to grab onto certain sections of the video where there might have been an issue. 
All right, everybody. I, I, I've just had about enough with this fucking engine. Every single fucking time. I've done everything I could think of to get this damn clutch tightened, okay? So here's what I've done. I've taken the carburetor off. I pulled the clutch off. I took the whole damn, I took the whole assembly off. Whole assembly off. Pushed on that damn arm till kingdom of comes, and then I tighten the, the fucking bolt down. Then, I put it all back together. It's fine. I roll it five feet. I do it again, and the fucking cable loosens up. Look, 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 seriously. I've had the fucking, I had this perfectly fine, and now this is tightened. I don't know what the hell's going on, and this thing is seriously pissing me off. Can anybody give me any idea what the fuck is going on? Tip number four is to stay calm. Don't blame the problems you're having on the bike or the motor. Don't blame them on anyone else. Don't say things like, I've been working on this stupid motor forever. I've been watching all these dumb videos. Nothing's helping. Don't do that. I, I understand the frustration. We've all been there, but you need to start your video. You need to calm down and only focus on asking for help and providing information. Tip number five is for YouTube. The YouTube comment section can be a great place to ask for help. I'm always willing to help someone who needs it in the comment section, even if their question is not related to the video. The problem is that the notification system on YouTube is hit and miss at best. I'll usually always get a notification when somebody posts their first comment. However, when they reply to a question that I ask, YouTube does not always notify me. And when somebody gets over 200 comments a day, it can be really hard to keep track of that question as it gets drowned out by other comments. So here's what you should do when asking for help in the YouTube comment section. First, you need to be willing to make a video. Like I said, if it goes beyond a yes or no question and you're not willing to make a video, there's not a lot that I'm going to be able to do to help you out. What I would do is make a video of the issue using the tips I provided and post that video on your channel and then you should go and ask your question in that question you should tell the person that you have posted a video on your channel I don't recommend linking the video in the comment because YouTube might send it to the spam folder now I keep an eye on my spam folder because I know there's some legitimate comments in there but a lot of channels don't keep an eye on this folder or when they see it it might be too late or just way after the issue so, make a video, post it on your channel, and then ask in the comments if that content creator can help you and let them know that you posted a p video of the issue on your channel. This makes it a lot easier for everyone. Now they can bookmark your video, go watch it, comment on it, and keep an eye on the replies. Now that we have the tips out of the way, let's move on to an example. I'm going to show you guys how I would ask for help with a particular issue that I'm having on my bike. Let's pretend that I don't know what the problem is with the bike. Okay, I know there's a problem, I've got some basic information, but I don't know what's causing the problem. I'm going to make this section of the video exactly as I would make a video that I wanted to post up when asking for help. Okay, starting now. Hey guys, uh, so I got this YD100 it's just on a 26 inch trail bike and when I pull in the clutch lever I can't get the tire to disengage from the motor okay levers in all the way and it won't spin all right um, so let me just take you guys and give you as much information as I can that might be relevant and any help would be much appreciated because I really want to ride this bike this weekend all right, got you guys on the tripod here and uh, give you some nice steady up close shots make sure everything's in focus so here's my clutch lever okay now I've had this adjuster screw all the way out okay as far as it can go without breaking and, uh, and she's still pretty loose doesn't feel like it's doing much it feels kind of spongy let me check the cable go along here I noticed earlier that um, I had accidentally put the clutch cable under this clamp. I didn't really do that. I'm just pretending like we did for video sake. And uh, it kind of bound up, so I went ahead and, and loosened that up. Good thing I caught that when I was trying to make the video. Anyways, this spring, I think it's the heat shield. 
it's been here the whole time. So I'm pretty sure that's where it's supposed to go. And I'm not sure what this part's called, but where the clutch cable goes into. Yeah, it looks good to me. Let's go around to the other side. And, uh, you know, here we go. Here we got the clutch cable. Now, she, she looks a little frayed. Uh, you guys think this is okay for now, or should I get a should I get a new cable? I mean, I know it looks damaged, but I imagine that I could still test it with that, right? Anyways, uh, she's moving around quite a bit. And uh, I'm sorry if the camera's a little shaky, guys, but I'm just trying to show you anything I can, all right? Now, before I start opening it up and looking at everything in there, any information you guys can provide would be much appreciated. All right, thanks, guys. All right, that is, is, is exactly as I would post um, a video for a question when asking for help. As much information as I can, steady, up-close shots, move slowly, just look at everything that might be related to the problem. If you have a problem with your bike, I want you to do that. People will help you, I promise. If I see it at the very least, <clears throat> I'll help you. The reason why I use this example video to post is because there's actually two issues at play. One of them's blatantly obvious, which everyone immediately picked up on. The clutch cable is too loose and simply needs to be tightened. It's also a little frayed, but that's not a big deal. The second issue is what the keen-eyed veteran builders would have picked up on thanks to the video. If you notice, when I was moving the bar around that the clutch cable is attached to, it's way too close to the frame before it tries to engage the clutch. In my particular situation, I just needed to loosen the flower nut, but there could be a more severe issue inside the motor. You could be missing the little bearing behind the bucking bar. Or, a common issue is that the bucking bar might start to mushroom out due to lack of grease. Another issue is that the cam might have started to round out. You use these clutch a lot, and the cam starts to round out at the edge and will no longer engage the clutch. So in the video, the veteran builders can pick up on this. That's why these videos, or at the very least pictures, are so important. Because you might have more than one issue that's not portrayed in a simple post. So guys, I hope these tips helped you out. And keep them in mind the next time you need help. If you're willing to help yourself, other people will be willing to help you. Alright, see you in the next video, and ride safe.